Yeah, well, you mentioned Kieran as well. Well, used to play in, in or has played in uh, finals. Have been key moments with uh, maybe not the most ideal conditions. Delighted to say, joins us on the line now, Kieran Donny. Morning to you. Morning, Adrian. How are you? Morning, all. Flying it, thanks. Very excited for the weekend that's ahead and the the next few weeks, indeed. Um, what's your take on all of that? We've just been discussing the um, Emma Fitzmaurice's comments in the Examiner this morning about the impact of the conditions and how the key positions now are goalkeeper, man markers, and free takers and teams that don't have as deep uh, pockets maybe as teams like the Dubs or carry to a degree, um, they, they are the key positions and teams can't afford to lose those players. Yeah, no, I, I, you know, I think Jim McGuinness made the point as well on, on Sky the other night about the importance of possessions, that there isn't so many turnovers in games anymore, Adrian. So each position you have from the kick-out is kind of a chance to set up an attack in a way. Um, I know teams are still going long, but they're going long to overloads and and they're going long to situations where they might have a three on two or four on three that's what they're trying to set up in a way so look mm-hmm. it is a key part of the game and look conditions and and i agree with Owen in many ways the pitches the pitches are going the good pitches are going to be in decent shape but you're you're still the ground is that bit heavier now crow park is probably the exception but the ball when it's really wet in crow park on a bad wet windy night is uh, it's it's a hard place to play the way the ball sticks off that surface and you know we've all seen Crow Park on, on a real wet night the ball nearly turns into a bar of soap at times so um, it, it may it, it, it may have issues on games uh, depending on who starts with with the breeze or against the breeze or you know it, it, it is going to play a factor there's no doubt about it if a team can start the game and get a huge momentum and get a big lead if they're playing with a breeze and they can pin a team in and they can put presses on the kick out. You know they can give themselves a serious platform to go, to go put up a big score in the first half, and then try and hold out in the second by maybe by tweaking the way you play your game. Um, so look, it is it is going to have a factor. It is going to be a factor. It's um, mad to think that one of Donegal or Tyrone are going to be gone after the weekend, isn't it? And and uh, I was astonished to look up and see that Tyrone are only sixth favourites at twenty to one to win the All Ireland. Is that unbelievable value, or have I just got carried away on the Conor McKenna train that? There's something about this Toronto team. Um, no, there is, there is something about them. I think uh, that might be a bit big on prices, but it, it, it is where they are, really. You know, I think McShane, when he does come back in next year, and if they can keep McKenna going well, and if they can bring through young Dara Canavan onto the team, uh, Peter Hart is always going to do his thing, and so is Matty Donnelly. So they, you know, and you've Niall Sludden, who started and got taken off at half time in the game, uh, the last game which would be a bit of a worry, but is on his day um, a, a handful coming off the, coming off the centre forward line, you Conor Myler as well. So they have the forwards. They're probably slightly light on midfield without Colin Cavanagh gone. Uh, Hansi mm-hmm. and Burns are, are, are good at what they do, but they're not your out-and-out midfielder that's going to take the game. Frank Burns can do a bit of everything. He's a good baller. He goes back and helps. I think both of them are actually playing the, the Colin Cavanagh mould himself and Hansi. I know Hansi might be out now for the weekend, but uh, they've, they've big, big, uh, big Ben McDonald as well to come in, and he's he's a he's a big handful as well, big, strong, and athletic player, um, and possibly looking like going with maybe him and a, and a smaller, more mobile Frank Burns in there with him uh, that allows you to keep Matty Donnelly in the half forward line. So look, they have a squad, you know, their their, their backs are getting there as well. They're well anchored by Ronan McNamee at full back, who's got a few all stars. So. You know they are they are a very exciting prospect. You throw McShane into that now, and and I'd be right on that platform with you, Adrian. And I think they'd have a good chance. But um, without him, I think you're going to see Donegal possibly the weekend. Um, Eamon O'Donnell, who had a great article in the Times yesterday, um, uh, just stating the importance of of Conor McKenna in these two games. He's mm-hmm. scored a direct a direct assisted in five ten out of the five twenty seven. So it just his importance can't be un- understated at all. Uh, he prefers to play at 11, Wiedemann. Uh, I talked to him during the week. Um, he prefers 11. That's his spot. That's where he likes to be. He's also a big option, as, as Eamon rightly pointed out in that article from Kickouts. He said that um, Tyrone targeted him 11 times against Donegal, and he, and he came away with the ball 10, 10 of those times, as in their team came away. So that's a very good status. We're going long to centre forward and coming away with 90% of the position. Um they're two slightly different positions. Um, he made the point about possibly would Tyrone look at starting him inside. I wouldn't because 
Uh, I think what Tyrone has to do with, or I think what Donegal has to do with, with Conor McKenna the next day is just go, and he'd be well used to this from the Aussie rules, but just go tag him. Um, just send somebody on him, maybe. Uh, if he was in a full forward, McGee would love that challenge, Neil McGee. He would go toe-to-toe mm-hmm. -to -toe with him and just kind of traipse around after him and try and keep him out of the game. Uh, another guy they have is Steve McMenamin. He's sticky, he's strong. He doesn't mind getting in people's face. He'll try and bring that side. He's unselfish enough to, to sacrifice his own game as he knows how important that key matchup is. You want to keep your own Bon Gallagher's and Ryan McHugh's free on the wings. You don't want to be putting them necessarily on the McHugh or on the McKenna unless you went with the idea of maybe sticking a Ryan McHugh on him early on and telling Ryan McHugh bomb for the first 10 minutes and see if we can drag McKenna 60 or 70 yards away from goal because in front of goal, he's been sensational so far. I and on that, Kieran, then, because like, I know that I, I watched that piece that you did with him, and you were talking about the physicality of the man, like, and obviously playing at 11 or maybe playing a, a bit uh, deeper in towards goal is maybe where he's been in the main so far. But, and it's very early days, really, obviously, in his, in his inter county career. But is there a, an old switcheroo here from Tyrone at some point that they, if the game's get away from him a bit, they draw him out a bit, like maybe even put him in alongside Murphy and try and break the game up that way? Or is that not something that would be in his brief just yet as he gets reused to the game again? Um, no, I think, to be honest, on what I've seen in the two games, I, I think he's brief as anything you want it to be. Um, I think he's 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 a, he's a top-class footballer. He's a top-class athlete, and he's going to bring on Tyrone an awful lot. Um, I think where he's playing is the spot for him, I'll be honest. I think that centre-forward roaming around the place, trying to drift in the odd time, you know, uh, keeping... If you drift in from centre-forward, Adrian, into full-forward, and you're as good as he is, and you have a centre-back in there who's not overly comfortable for a few minutes, um, that's where you can cause cause a bit of hassle, mm -hmm. which is what he did really well against Mayo. Um, but he's passing, he's, his assists off of marks, off of kick passes is really good. So I think if it's his favourite position and he's only played in the game a few weeks since he came back, I just think you leave him at 11. You don't try and trick around with him too much going into a big knockout game. You put him out in the middle of the field or you throw him full forward and the first 15 or 20 minutes don't go well, you're giving his man momentum, you're giving the opposition momentum, you bring him back to centre-forward and trying to trying to recover, and it doesn't work for him. Uh, you may be kind of, you know, maybe looked at maybe, why didn't you just leave him with what he was so effective at? But look, yeah. Mickey Hartley know well, Adrian, that this is not going to be Mayo and Castle Bar in a league game, uh, and they know it's not going to be, you know, it's 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 going to be different gravy on on Sunday afternoon, and um, they'll be they'll be coming for Conor McKenna because they have to, and and he'll have to get used to the the white heat of championship being targeted, being verbally targeted, and to hold his head because you know a straight red here or something silly for any player is going to is could cost them their season. So it's um, he's going to get seriously targeted and. Uh, that's going to be something that I pr presume he'd be used to all that. I know the Aussies are desperate trash talkers. They're unbelievable at it, <laughs> and they'll go all day at it. I noticed that the first time I played against them um, in 2006. They're just, their verbal game is very strong, so he would have be got a lot of that, and he made it right to the top of the game over there. Um, so I think he'd be used to all that, but it's just the physical playing for his own people again. Can you keep the emotions in check? All of that stuff, because they are going to come for him, because they have to. It was a pretty good game between the sides last year. It was 116 to 15 points. Donegal obviously put up big scores in the Super 8s and Tyrone have unleashed a bit more of an expansive style of play last weekend. Is that all pointless this weekend? Does it go back to a KG Ulster affair and, and how do you see the game going? I, I, I do. A small bit of me sees it going back to just being a real dogfight the weekend because it's just... It, that's, it, it's what it's going to be. It's it's do or die. It's it's as you rightly said at the start of the show. We we're going to have no Donegal or no Tyrone after the first round. So that's unthinkable at, at times. So this game is going to be fraught with tension. Um, guys are going to be right to the peak of of all their senses about how to try and get over and try and win a game. Um, and look, a break of a ball, uh, a, a call. I think I think it's a very tight game. Um, I think the fact that that Donegal won't have twenty three or four thousand in Bally Buffet roaring them on the weekend uh, will will we'll level it up a bit. Um, so Tyrone are getting a break from that point of view. Um, so look, it's it's, it's going to be it's it's really exciting to look forward to. 
you're still tipping Donegal by the sounds of things? I am. I'm still tipping Donegal just to get over the line. I think they have the more rounded team. I think they're more sure about themselves than where they are. Um, I think, you know, Jamie Brennan and Oshin Gallen and Michael Murphy is a foot forward line. But Murphy doing a bit of everything as he always does for Donegal is, is, is extremely strong. Uh, Pat Morgan is, is, is a big addition on the wing. Mm. Um, you're solid in the middle of the field and you've got a good access at the back as well. You've won Barn, Ryan McHugh there, Darrell Obwell, uh, uh, Neil McGee. Um, so, yeah, Steve McMenamin in the corner. They have a nice, they have a nice uh, squad and they have patterned in goals. And look, the two goalies are, are that's another thing, another thing to look out for the weekend. If we want to look to back up Eamon Fitzmaurice's column or you want to look at at, at what Jim McGuinness was saying on, on Sky the other night, it's, you know, kickouts and possession, accurate kickouts, both short and long, will have a huge bearing in this game. He actually suggested that, that Donegal could possibly crack Morgan if they get at him, if they push up on him. Um, we played against Patton. He was with the guards last year in the Sigerson Cup game, and we had we had a full court press of him uh, and rattled him a small bit in that. Uh, they were playing against the breeze and, and it was a big breeze and he was trying to go along and, and we kind of put a bit of a press on him. So look, it, it depends on, you know, Tyrone adapted a small bit against Mayo. They pushed up at times that we haven't seen in a, in a long time from the Tyrone team. I think they did it when, when Mayo were trying to come out against the breeze. They really pushed up in them man for man, which is something we haven't seen from Tyrone. So tactics are going to be fascinating. The, the, the water breaks are going to be fascinating how you can change things up. And I just think that white heat of championship that we've been missing for so long is, is, is going to bring everybody to the edge of their seats on Sunday and Saturday, Saturday and Sunday. It's, it's obviously the, the big game of the weekend, but there are so many other games to, to chat about as well. And definitely the one that's probably the, the second most exciting is Cavan against Monaghan at the weekend as well. And it, I guess everybody's tipping Monaghan for this one, despite the fact that Cavan really did a number on them last year. And I, I wonder, here if, if one of the factors around Monaghan this year is that as a winter footballer, Conor McManus has proven every single league campaign that he is brilliant in these conditions. Yeah, I think, I think look, McManus is brilliant in any conditions, really. McManus mm. is just a great footballer and just an accurate player, and he's strong and he's tough and he'll keep going. You can knock him as many times as you want. He's going to keep coming back. He'll keep popping him over the bar. He's leading in front of goal. He's a ball winner. He's their emotional leader. Um, but again, uh, Monaghan's slight disadvantage, you know, in Clonus, no, no, no 20 or 30,000 mad fans. That makes a difference. You know, it's, it's a fact of sport where places are hard to go. I think you're seeing it both in the bubble in the NBA, you some crazy results, crazy comebacks. Uh, that probably wouldn't be, happen if, if, if that would be harder to happen if, if you're the momentum factor with the crowd. So, yeah, look, McManus is, is serious. But, you know, Kevin... I tipped Kevin in this game last year in Breffney and, you know, I'm not going as far to tip him again, but they have no pressure on them. It's a complete free shot for them to have a go off of Kevin. They've scored very well in the league. They scored over 21 points in three games. They scored over 17 points in another three games and their first game was a disaster where Armagh gave them a tanking. So defence is their issue. Uh, will they have been working on that you know, hugely over the last few weeks. Um, I think definitely their, their 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 video meetings would have been fun over the last few nights about how to how to tighten that up because that is a serious serious issue. But if they do tighten that up, we have a storm coming in, bad conditions coming in on Saturday night. It makes it a bit tighter. It makes it it's a bit of an equalizer. Um, and they've got players. You know, they've got they've got a young uh, half back there, Kieran Brady. Um, I was talking to you in the boar's head, and he said he's absolutely flying on farm, uh, chipping in with scores every game. He's expecting two or three from him the weekend. Obviously, last year, Gerard McKernan was huge. Uh, uh, you know, stats in the middle of the field. I think if Monaghan are to really go for this in a do or die game, you know, maybe they could look at getting getting him in at 14 early on, planking a few balls in the top of him, see if they could get an early goal see if they could put the pressure on Monaghan because as I said there is no pressure on Kevin in this game Monaghan have been waiting for this for 18 or 19 months to get a crack back at Kevin for a bit of payback for last year uh, so if this thing is tight down the stretch it, it'll be Monaghan that will feel the pressure it's Monaghan that are supposed to go through this tie uh, and, if, and if they can get McKernan inside and get a bit of momentum off of that 
you know, Martin Riley was 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 like Ryan Giggs last year. He did, he's a left leg like a wand, and he was fantastic the way he was spraying the ball around the place. Uh, he lost, has lost a small bit of his pace that he had when he was a youngster, but like his passing ability and the outside of the left boot. Obviously, McVitie is, is a big is a big loss. Uh, I think he's out in Australia, but the young guy from Crosser Lock, James Smith. He was he was really good in in, in the in the replay and the and the and the Kevin County final. So he's one for the future, and he's one that will have to kind of have a big game and and announce himself on, on on the big stage on on Saturday. But it is it's going to be tense. It's going to be tight. We've got some great players on show, uh, and yeah, looking forward to getting stuck into it with with Peter and Jim uh, Jim McGuinness on um, on Saturday morning and, and seeing where we're going with it. Yeah, I know you're saying you're not tipping Cavan, but it all sounds like that's exactly what you're doing. Um, I, 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 I'm, at, I, I, I'm kind of, it's either going to be that tight game where Monaghan have, a, where, where Cavan have a, a chance, or it's going to be Monaghan with posters of Cavan players on their wall for the last 18 months, and they just can't mm-hmm. wait to get a hold of them. And and Monaghan could win by eight or nine. So, look, Cavan got relegated, they'll be a bit down the dumps, but that's why I, that, that puts it back to. The league and where they are next year absolutely has no bearings come quarter past one on, on, on Saturday. That ball is going to be thrown in and you have two local rivals that are going to go toe-to-toe. And if Kevin can stick in there for long enough, they may have a sneaky chance. Yeah. All right. Enjoy the games. Catch up with you next week. No bother. Thanks, William. Kieran Donny on the line there. And uh, Kieran is very heavily involved. You can just check out his social channels and indeed our own because we'll give you a push to this. Um, he's uh, raising funds for his home basketball club. You'll all know that he's very involved in that game and um, the uh, Garvey's Trilly Warriors. You can uh, check out his social handles for details on how exactly to get involved in that.